What's up guys, this is Prada MC from PR Tech Reviews and I'm here to show you how to install Android x86 into a VirtualBox virtual machine. Um, right now I'm on a MacBook Pro, so it's the same for Windows, same universal guide, so um, let's get started. I'll have the links in the description below to download and, to download and Android x86 and, uh, uh, and VirtualBox. So anyways, you're going to want to go to the link in the description. Once you're on the Android x86 uh, website, you're going to want to click download. And you're wanting to scroll down to the latest version. Right now it's at 4.2. So you want to just click view. And you want to save this ISO wherever. Um, I already I've already downloaded this, so I don't need to re-download it. Um, after that, you're going to want to go pick up a uh, I'm going to want to pick up VirtualBox from Oracle Sun Systems, I forgot their name, but whatever host, you have a Windows, OS X, Linux, or Solaris. Um, you have to use VirtualBox for this because, actually I have no idea why, but it only worked with VirtualBox. VMware didn't work for me, so you guys are want to, going to want to use VirtualBox for this. So anyways, after that, you can exit out of your browser, and then you can... Oh, well, you can open after you install VirtualBox. You have to install first, and then after that, you open it, and it'll show up like this. I already made a virtual machine, but I'll make a new one. So I'll click new. So I want to put name Android 4.21. I want to change my type to Linux. I don't want to change it to other Linux. All right, you want to click continue. Uh, you want to put how much RAM you want to put. Uh, I like to put one gig just because to be on the safe side. So I just click continue. You want to create a virtual hard drive? Yes. VDI, virtual box disk image. Dynamically allocated, continue. Uh, eight gigs, I'm fine with it. This is the amount of storage space you have. Make sure that you set the, the highest amount that you want right now. You can change it, but you can only make it lower later. So keep that in mind while creating the partition. So you just want to click create and boom there's your virtual machine right there so now you're gonna click settings storage and you want to click this empty right here it says empty it's a CD drive you want to click empty and then you want to click this CD choose virtual CD DVD disk so wherever you save this ISO you're gonna click on like you're gonna go to the ISO and you're gonna click you're gonna double click on the ISO and it will be loaded up so you're gonna click OK after that and you're going to start this virtual machine. So once the virtual machine starts, it will tell you if you want to run it, uh, if you want to run it without installation, in VESA mode, in debug mode, or if you want to install it. Right now, for this purpose, I want to install it. So I'll show you all this code turning up. So you're going to want to create and modify partitions. Um, here, you're going to press Enter. Oh, sorry, not Enter. You're going to want to click new primary and enter you're going to use the right and left arrow keys to go to navigate through these menus so now i just created a new partition sda1 primary linux so what i want to want to do is flag this as bootable so when you see the bootable highlighted click enter and you're going to want to just write so you want to click enter on write and it says this may destroy data on your disk, but there's no data on this, so you're just going to type in yes and click enter. So write the partition table to the disk as that goes. By the way, this is Android 4.2, so um, after that, you're going to want to click quit, and your new partition will come up, SDA1 Linux VBox hard disk. You just want to click OK. You want to format, I format to ext3, so ext3, um, yes, it will make a partition, and make sure to install the uh, the Grub bootloader, just click yes, and you want to install, yes, you want to make it read and write, so you have root privileges, so after that's done installing, we'll wait a little bit, shouldn't take too long, should take like a couple seconds. Um, so you can run it or reboot. Right now what I'm going to do is actually take out this, this, we're going to remove this disk right here. Ooh. Oh, sorry, never mind. Um, you're going to want to reboot, or actually, well, you just want to click reboot, and then 
Uh, let it reboot. I don't know why this is doing this, so I'm just going to click X, and I'm going to power off the machine. What, what, the reason why you want to power off the machine is so you can take the disk out, because we don't want it booting with the disk. So, right here it says Control IDE, just minus off the disk and just remove it. You can add, it, add another disk later if you want to. Then you just click OK, and you start the machine again. And Oracle VM VirtualBox so asks, do you want 4.2 test or 4.2 test debug mode? I want just 4.2 test. So it will boot up, as you can see, the Android boot animation. Um, the main purpose is, oh, okay, wait, I'll go back to that later. So it will say welcome. Um, the Ethernet is working with this, so it, the Internet will work. Um, in Android 4.2 in a virtual machine just in case you're wondering and also right when you start the machine if you want the mouse pointer which is really important if you don't have a touchscreen display it, um, you're gonna want to click machine and you want to disable the mouse integration so that when you click on it it will give you a mouse inside the virtual machine so uh, English from the United States click start let's say just a sec So as this is going, um, pretty much Android x86, what they did was they ported Android over to mainly like in, um, Intel or AMD architectures so that um, x86 platforms could run Android on their devices. This is mainly for like netbooks or like tablet computers that were like, that were from like the old days, like maybe like the, the I forgot what they were called, but like those those XP um, those XP tablets, or like the little netbooks that have Windows Starter on them, or even the new Windows 8 tablets. You could, I'm pretty sure you're you could install this on there. And the beauty with uh, how when they made the Android 4.2 release was now it's released for universal architectures, so you don't have to download the exact one that you were supposed to have. You can download any type. So. Anyways, right now it's going to say select Wi-Fi. Obviously, right now in this virtual machine, there's no Wi-Fi card, so I'm just going to click skip, and I'm going to skip anyway. Um, I got Google, but I don't want it right now. I'm just going to click no, not now. It's just like setting up a normal Android. Google location, this is the time. Uh, tablet name, Pratt, MC. Click next. It will receive install updates fine and then finish so it will give you the normal Android little pieces bits and pieces how to use it how the launcher works everything but as you can see it is Android 4.2 running in a virtual machine in VirtualBox so anyways let's get into the settings of this device I'm gonna go into about tablet and here you are Android 4.2 there's no baseband version. Kernel version 3.8. Android x86. Build number Android x86. User debug 4.2.2. .2, uh, 228 2013. So if you want to uh, activate developer options, you just keep clicking the build number. Um, this is great, again, to use if you have like tablets or devices that really like. Like they usually run really old versions of software or like you really do not like the current operating system on them and you really like the Android interface and how it looks and you're fine with using it with just like a mouse and a keyboard. Um, this is also, it has the Google Play Store so you can download a lot. You have the Google Play Store and um, all the Google apps associated with it so you can download almost any app that you want that are supported by tablets. Uh, yes, this is considered a tablet, so it runs in tablet interface, if you didn't really notice. So you do have multi-user support. I'm pretty sure there's up to eight users or something. So um, all there, it, it's in the readme or what's it called, the the change log. It'll tell you what's what's like what what the changes are for Android 4.2. But anyways, uh, you can install this on any x86 device or VirtualBox, which is a great way to test it out. You can 
try apps that you never wanted if you wanted to try it as like a tablet UI or you for me at least I have now a place to review apps on because I really don't have an actual camera other than my actual device so now I can review apps also I can review them in tablet form uh, you can use it to test your applications so say you're writing an application you can test it in this interface you can test it on a tablet interface you can test it on a PC you have resources you can change the amount of RAM stuff like that um, otherwise it, it's it's just a it's just a cool kind of little neat hack I guess not really hack but cool neat little thing to have if you want to show off to your iOS buddies hey look I got Android 4.2 in my on my computer like it's sick so anyways guys um, so this was how to install Android x86 please like comment rate subscribe uh, I'll be making new videos uh, sooner or later. You uh, just have to find time. I haven't been able to find time recently. And this actually, I found this only a couple days ago. So I really wanted to review it for you guys. I didn't see many reviews for the 4.2 version because it literally just came out. So anyways, guys. Um, so I need to actually, one more thing. To shut down this machine, you just want to go to settings and power off. And just click OK. So, anyways, guys, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, like this video, share this video. Uh, this is Pride MC. See you guys later.